Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And what I want to preach on is the subject, the power of letting go. The power of letting go. In this verse, we see that in order to run the race that is set before us, in order to serve God and bring him glory, there are things in our life that we need to lay aside, or in other words, we need to let go. And so that's why I'm going to preach on what we need to let go in order to serve God or in order to grow in God. Because here's the thing, you won't grow if you don't let go. And the first thing that we need to learn to let go is we need to let go of the grudges that we have against our brothers and sisters in Christ. Like I said, I'm going to preach on three things that we need to let go of to serve God. And the first thing that I'm going to preach that we need to let go is the grudges. Because Ephesians chapter 4 Verses 31 and 32 say, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You see, we as brothers and sisters in Christ need to learn how to not nurse grudges against each other. There is a whole wicked world out there that already hates us Christians, and that's why the least we can do is not hate each other because we're already getting enough opposition from the world. We need to learn how to love each other, build each other up, and let go of the grudges. If your brother or sister in Christ wronged you 15 years ago, nine months ago, six weeks ago, you need to let it go and forgive them because we want God to forgive us the next time we do something wrong. Think about it. As much as your brother or sister in Christ has wronged you, have you ever wronged God? Look at what Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15 say. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So you see, I want God to show mercy on me the next time that I sin the next time I do something stupid. I want God to be merciful when he goes to deliver the punishment. I want God to show me mercy if he want, if he's wanting to punish me for my sin. So how do I obtain that mercy? I need to be merciful to my brother or sister in Christ. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy, right? If you want God to go easy on you, go easy on your brother or sister in Christ. Let go of that grudge so that you may serve God. Because there's an example in the Bible of a grudge where the person really was wronged. The person that they're angry with really did them dirty. But they nursed that grudge, and you know what? This person ended up committing suicide. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Ahithophel in the Bible. In 2 Samuel, Ahithophel was basically Bathsheba's grandfather. So you know Bathsheba, the man, uh, Bathsheba was the woman who the man David, you know, King David, stole Bathsheba from her husband and ended up killing Bathsheba's husband and taking Bathsheba to be his wife. That was a wicked thing David did. And Bathsheba's grandfather Ahithophel took exception to that. And he hated David so much that he tried to overthrow David. And when the overthrow failed, Ahithophel hanged himself in his own house. And so because he nursed that grudge and let that bitterness just seep in him, he didn't learn how to let it go and give it to Jesus. He ended up taking his own life. And you don't want to do that. Here's the thing. If you nurse grudges and don't learn how to let things go and move on and not nurse grudges, then it's going to make you a less healthy person. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. If you don't learn how to get over that grief and get over that grudge, it'll dry out your health. It'll negatively impact your health. I've actually experienced these kinds of things before where somebody wronged me. I went to bed thinking about how angry I was with that person. I woke up with a sore throat or the next day it would make me have, you know, a bad flare up of eczema or I would not be able to, you know, my digestive tract would not work effectively the way it should. But when I try to be more positive and focus on God and not nurse those grudges and let those things go, I, I find that I'm healthier that way. So you see, you forgive your brother or sister in Christ, number one, so God can go easy on you the next time you do something wrong so that you could possibly build a good relationship with your brother or sister in Christ. And the other reason is for your own personal health. Grudges 
are not healthy. Now, of course, I'm not talking about if some reprobate out there does something wicked to you. I am talking about when your brother or sister in Christ wrongs you. Don't nurse that grudge. That's not a healthy thing to do. You need to let that go so you can grow in the Lord. The next thing that we need to learn to let go of is our sins from the past. You see, a lot of us, before we got saved, we had some very wicked things that we grew up around, or we had some very wicked things that we used to do. And as a result of that, we, some of us might have been proud of those things. For example, a lot of you young ladies out there, you might have grown, before you got saved, you might have been taught to be proud of how many men you could get into the bedroom. A lot of you young men out there, before you got saved, you might have been taught to be proud of how many young ladies you could get into the bedroom. Well, you see, here's the thing. When we get saved and get a Bible in our hand and start serving God, we need to learn that some of those things that we used to be proud of were not worth being proud of. You wanted to be so proud of that accomplishment, let it go. Serve God. Win a soul to Christ. Read your Bible through. Bring God some glory. Raise a godly family. Do things for God that are actually worth being proud of. Philippians chapter 3, verses 6 through 14, the Bible reads, Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. So you see here, Paul is talking about how he used to be so proud of persecuting the church. But after he got saved, he realized that he was wrong. And so the things he used to be proud of, he realizes that they were a loss. He's letting them go. He's not still trying to cling to the man he used to be. He's trying to serve God with a renewed mind. Verse 8, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. So he's saying those things I used to be proud of, they're dung. They're worthless. They're crap. I want to win Christ. I want to serve God and make him proud of me. So you see, you have to let go of your old priorities. What you used to think was worth being proud of, it may not have necessarily been something you should have been proud of. You need to start serving God and doing things that are actually worth being proud of and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. So you see, back before Paul got saved, he, he was taught to be proud of all of his good works. But guess what? Good works don't save you. Only faith does. So Paul is looking back and realizing, I was so proud of the stuff I used to do, but I didn't realize I wasn't even saved. He didn't even have step one of putting your faith in Christ so you can be saved. And you have a lot of people like that out in this world. They're going to church. They're going to church and they're doing righteous actions, but they don't trust Christ for their salvation. And so what they're so proud of is trust in their own works. That's dung. You need to trust Christ for your salvation, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, what does Paul mean when he says attain unto the resurrection of the dead? Well, you see, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The Bible teaches that when Christ comes back, the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see, Jesus Christ is the resurrection. Jesus Christ coming back, he's going to bring the resurrection by bringing back the dead in Christ and bringing his believers together with him in the air. That is called the rapture. That's the resurrection of the dead. What is Paul saying? He's saying, I want to serve God unto the moment he comes back, whenever that is. And that's the right attitude to have as a believer. You and I should have the attitude as Christians of we're going to serve Jesus until the moment he comes back. We're not going to get lazy and complacent. We want to go full speed ahead for the Lord or full steam ahead for the Lord. Not as though I had already attained either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So you see, God has delivered him. Now he wants to serve God. He wants to reciprocate. He wants to show his appreciation for what God has done for him. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So you see, he said, I press toward the mark, but notice, how does he press toward it? He has to forget those things which are behind 
and reach for reach forth unto those things which are before. You see, if you have one hand f grasped firmly on your past back here, and you try to grab the future, those two things are in opposite directions. That's going to tear you apart. Let go of the past and put both of your hands on the future and move forward with serving God. You need to learn to let go of your past self. Who you used to be before you were saved, all those wicked things you used to do, all those wicked things you used to say, all those wicked things you used to drink, and you might have been so proud of it, you need to learn to let that go so you can serve God. Otherwise, if you try to bring your old man with you to try to serve God, you're not going to be able to serve him as effectively. Look at what Ephesians 4, 20 through 23 says, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Notice, put off the former conversation, you know, put off that old man, that person you used to be before you got saved, you need to reject those sins and serve God so you can bring him glory. Now, here's the thing. Rejecting your old sins is not what gets you into heaven, but rejecting your old sins is what makes you able to live a life that is more pleasing to God. Remember, it's your faith that gets you into heaven, but putting, but you have a lot of people who are saved, but still living in their old sins and God will punish them for it, and they won't be able to bring God much glory for it. Don't be that person. You need to serve God and let go of those things so you can move forward with him, because guess what? If you don't learn to get over your old sin, it's not just going to affect your life, it's going to also affect your children. Genesis 35, 1 through 2. This is, ha this is a story that happens around the time where Jacob's daughter Dinah had committed fornication and shacked up with a man named Shechem, you see, that brought disgrace upon Jacob's family, but, but Jacob and his family, their priorities had gone astray. But look what God says. God gives him a wake-up call, Genesis 35, 1 through 2. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. Notice, he had to tell his household, that's his family, to get rid of the sin. Because guess what? If you don't get rid of that sin in your life, your children might repeat that same sin and they might do it worse than you did. Think about David's sin. David was a polygamist. Now, I need to make a sermon on why polygamy was wrong even in the Old Testament and that's coming in the future, God willing. But here's the thing. David had seven wives. Solomon had a thousand wives. If you don't get over that sin in your life, your children will emulate your sin and take it even further and even worse than you did. David just had a few extra wives. Solomon was a walking mattress, on the other hand, and that was David's son. If your children grow up watching you in that sin, they could take it worse than you. That's why you need to let go of your past so that your children's future doesn't just become a repeat of the wicked stuff in your past. Matthew 7, 5, thou hypocrite, First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast the moat out of thy brother's eye. After you've finished dealing with that sin in your life, now you're in a position to talk to the next person and help your brother and sister in Christ get that sin out of their life. But if you keep that sin in your life, how can you see clearly to help them get the sin out of their own life? Care about your children. Leave your sinful past in your past as much as you can so that you can serve God. Now, the final thing that you need to let go of. The first thing was let go of your grudges against your brother and sister in Christ. The second thing is letting go of the old sins that you used to do before you got saved or that you used to do when you were out in the world. And the final thing you need to learn to let go of is let go of the grief that has plagued your life. Proverbs 31 talks about the sin of drinking alcohol, but it also tells us what type of people are more likely to drink alcohol. Verses four through six say this, it is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. 
Now, notice what it says there. It says it is not for kings to drink alcohol, right? It's not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Well, if you're a believer, then you're part of the royal priesthood. Therefore, drinking alcohol is not for you either. And if you don't buy that, look at verse 5. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Does God want us perverting judgment? Does God want us forgetting his law? Absolutely not. So that's why drinking is a sin for any Christian. But it goes deeper. The Bible tells us what kind of people are more likely to drink. It says, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. That's a depressed person. Ready to perish? Perishing is talking about death. This is like a person who's like contemplating suicide. These are people who there's so much grief in their heart that they've not gotten over. And it says, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. These are people who, whether they had something traumatic happen to them in their childhood, maybe they were abused, maybe they were bullied, maybe they were physically attacked, maybe they got violated, you know, molested or something like that, and they never learn how to give it to Jesus. They never learn how to cast their cares upon Jesus for he cares for them. Or they never learn how to find a brother or sister in Christ who can pray with them and help hold them accountable. The Bible does say say to bear one another's burdens. We are responsible to pray for each other and help each other through the tough times. So if that's you, if you're a brother or sister in Christ and you've been through some trauma, don't be this guy in Proverbs 31 verse 6 where he lets the grief get to him where he's like, oh, life is over. I don't care. I'm just going to drink. I'm just going to get high. I'm just going to do whatever it takes to numb the pain. No, you need to go to Jesus and help him and, and let him help you get over your pain. You need to go to your brother or sister in Christ and let them help you get over your pain. Because if not, then you're going to be the one that drinks. You're going to be the one that's ready to perish. But you don't want that. You want to go to someone on this earth that cares about you. Go to your brother or sister in Christ. You need to go to the Lord Jesus because the Bible says, casting your cares upon him for he careth for you. Don't don't hold on to that grief. Talk to somebody. Don't just hold it inside. It could destroy you. And you really don't want that. You don't want to be in Ahithophel where he just hangs himself in his closet, realizing that it's all over. You don't want to be some sort of drunk where... You're just vexing your soul with all this wicked alcohol. You need to let it go. Let the grudge go. Let the old wicked pride from your old sins go. And also you need to learn to let the grief go. Don't hold it inside. Give it to the Lord because God wants to restore you. He doesn't want you to just perish. Isaiah 40, 31, and I'm going to end here. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Get your strength from Jesus, but you got to let go of this over here so that God can use you. God bless you.